Merry Christmas everyone from Catherine's Plates. Today I'm going to show you how to make three homemade Christmas cookies. We are going to be making peanut butter blossoms, red velvet cookies, and thumbprint cookies. Okay, if you're ready, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, we're going to start making peanut butter blossoms. This is going to be a classic peanut butter cookie and we are going to put Hershey Kisses into the center of them. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cream together one cup of peanut butter, one cup of softened butter, one cup of granulated white sugar, one cup of brown sugar that we're going to pack into the cup, one teaspoon of vanilla, and then two eggs. Okay, I have three cups of all-purpose flour. To that, I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking powder, and then one and a half teaspoons of some baking soda. All right, that's the half. And then I'm going to put the one teaspoon in. And what I'm going to do is just sift it right into our peanut butter mixture. Now I'm just going to take my spatula here and I'm just going to blend this all together very carefully until it's all well incorporated. So it's just kind of easy if you just kind of push the peanut butter into the flour. Okay, that's what we're looking for. Okay, what we're gonna use is a one inch cookie scoop. I'm gonna drag it through my dough here. And then we're just gonna roll it into a ball. And we're gonna roll it into the sugar. And then we're just gonna place it onto our cookie sheet. Now, you can line this with some parchment paper or do a sill pat here or an ungreased cookie sheet will work also. And we're gonna keep these about two inches apart so that they can grow. All right, we're gonna place these in our oven that's been preheating at 375 degrees for about eight to 10 minutes. We're looking for these to have a nice golden brown on the edges of these cookies. I just pulled my cookies out of the oven and they stayed in there about 10 minutes until they got nice and crackly. Now what you wanna do is have your Hershey Kisses all unwrapped and ready to go because once these come out of the oven, you wanna start taking one putting it on the center and then just kind of pushing it in. Put it on the cookie and then just push it in while it's still hot. You got about three minutes to do that because then we're gonna pull these off of the pan and place them on a wire cookie rack so they can cool completely. Okay, for this batch here, I'm just going to make these a regular peanut butter cookie. So I'm going to give them their classic look, which is I'm going to take a fork, I'm going to press down on the cookie one way, and then we're going to place it 
crosswise, just like that. Okay, and these are going to go in the oven at 375 degrees for the 8 to 10 minutes. We're just looking for them to get nice and golden brown on the edges. Okay, I've got my peanut butter blossoms all done. Look at how cute those look. They just look so perfect. And then you can make the peanut butter cookies with them and just do a crisscross on the top before they go in the oven like that there. My husband likes them like these the best <laughs> and then he will eat them with the Hershey Kisses now my kids will devour these but these are all gonna be saved except for a few for my cookie boxes that I'm gonna be making to send out there we except go for this one. <laughs> okay let's make one of my favorite cookies at the holidays and that is thumbprint now, this recipe is coming out of my cookbook. Now, this is the first volume and thumbprint cookies here. And this is the recipe I'm going to be using. So grab your favorite jam and let's go ahead and make these. We're going to be using an electric hand mixer. And in a large bowl, we are going to place one cup of room temperature butter. Okay, to my butter, I'm going to add two thirds cup of white granulated sugar. And then what we're gonna do is using our electric hand mixers, we're gonna beat this until it gets nice and fluffy. Okay, we're going to add one teaspoon of some vanilla extract. Okay, now I'm not going to put the whole egg in. What we're going to do is I'm going to crack the egg here and we're just going to take the yolk out of it. So I'm just going to crack the egg here pretty much halfway through. And then we're going to allow the whites to fall into the bowl. There we go. There we go. That was one slippery egg. All right. And you can just go back and forth through the shells here to get all the white out. And then I'm just going to add the yolk into my mixture here. Now, use this for like scrambled eggs or anything else that you may have going on. All right, we're gonna go ahead now and mix this together. Okay, I've got two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour, and we're gonna add just a quarter teaspoon of salt. To the, we'll just go ahead and add it to the flour here. Stir that up. Now, if you're using unsalted butter, you'd want to put a half teaspoon in here. Now, this is salted butter that I've used in here, so I'm just going to put a quarter teaspoon. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start incorporating our flour a little bit at a time until this mixture here forms a ball of dough. All right, let's see what's going on. Oh yeah, I can push it together, as you can see. And as long as you can push that dough into a ball, that's what we're looking for. Look at that. I'm using a one inch cookie scoop. I'm just gonna drag it through the dough, place it in the palm of my hand. We're just gonna roll it into a ball. And then what we wanna do is you can either use your thumb 
or I'm using a melon baller here and you want to push down the center of the cookie to make a little circle and then I'm going to take some of our favorite jam strawberry so just think of all the flavors in that that you can use the different colors and then I'm going to put about a teaspoon into the circle right there pull the dough out evenly across the bowl place it in the palm of your hand roll it into a ball place it on your cookie sheet now I'm using just a silpat right here or you can use like parchment paper and then what I'm going to do is just take a melon baller the back end of it or you can use your thumb because these are thumbprint cookies and just make a thumbprint right there you get about a teaspoon of your favorite jam or jelly and put it in now some people make the thumbprint then they bake the cookie and then they put the jelly in I do the jelly before it goes in the oven that way it just sets up in there Okay, we're going to place these in our preheated oven at 375 degrees for 8 to 10 minutes until the sides are nice and kind of golden and crispy. Okay, I've just pulled these out of the oven. I'm going to let them sit on the cookie sheet for about 2 to 3 minutes just to help them solidify and hold their shape. And then I'm going to take them off. I'm going to place them on a cookie rack and let them cool completely. Okay, look at these thumbprint cookies using strawberry jam. Use whatever flavor you want. Red velvet cookies with cream cheese frosting. Now, my mom sent me this recipe because she wants these for Christmas. So, I'm going to make a whole batch of these and then I'm going to use these also to put into my cookie tins that I'm going to be giving out for Christmas. So, to get started, what you're going to need is a large bowl, and we're going to add one cup of room temperature butter. You want to make sure it's very soft, but you don't want it melted. I've got half a cup of white granulated sugar that I'm going to add. And what I'm going to do now is use an electric hand mixer, and I'm going to beat this for about five minutes make sure that you're on this for five minutes okay and blend this until it's nice and creamy fluffy and all combined all right now my mom swears by this the five minute mixing rule on this it makes it so creamy and what it does is it's supposed to make the cookie very light and airy and very delicious so what we're going to do now now if you don't want to stand here for five minutes doing this you can put it in your stand mixer and do it and that's totally fine but just let it do it for five minutes okay let's go ahead and add one teaspoon of some vanilla now we're just going to use the egg yolk in here so we're going to break the egg in half and we're going to kind of hold the yolk in one shell put it over to the next do that a few times until we get all of that white off of the yolk here and then we're going to add that to our mixture got to give this some color because this is a red velvet cake so i just have some red food gel here and so we're going to add 
just a little bit. We need to give it that red color. So put a little bit, start with a little bit, and then work your way into, you get that deep, dark red color. So I'm gonna go ahead and blend this. All right, we're gonna move this out of the way for just a second. Bring a bowl over here. Now I've got two cups of all-purpose flour and I'm going to add some unsweetened cocoa powder. Two tablespoons. Okay, I'm just gonna whisk this together. It'll kind of be like your sifter too, because it's gonna break up your flour. Okay, let's go ahead and bring over our mixture back. Okay, let's go ahead and start incorporating some of our chocolate flour into our batter here. And then start mixing it up until we get all of that incorporated into here. Okay, what we're doing now is we're gonna go ahead and use a one inch cookie scoop. We're gonna run it through the dough and then we're gonna place it into the palm of our clean hand. We're gonna roll it into a ball. Now I've got some white granulated sugar here or you can even use coarse sugar if you wanna use that also. And we're just gonna cover our little dough ball here with sugar and place it on our sheet pan. And you wanna leave about two inches in between each dough ball here. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take just a, like a baby spoon or you can use a melon baller, just something that's going to give you a, print, a circle in the center like that. And it needs to be deep enough because that's what's gonna hold the mixture. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we wanna pre-cook these before we add the cream cheese filling. So we're gonna place these in a preheated oven at 300 degrees for about 10 minutes. Now, while these are pre-cooking, what we're gonna do is make the cream cheese filling. Okay. For the cream cheese filling, I've got four ounces of room temperature cream cheese in a medium bowl. To that, we're gonna add a quarter cup of white granulated sugar, quarter teaspoon of salt, and half a teaspoon of some vanilla extract. And we're just going to whisk this together. I'm going to be using my hand mixer over here. Mix this all together until it's nice, smooth, and creamy. All right, we're going to pull the cookies that have been pre-cooking in the oven bring them out and then we're going to start filling the cream cheese in there and then we need to finish cooking them off. I'm gonna take two spoons and just a little bit of the mixture here, like about a teaspoon. And then you wanna put it into the cookie and then we're just going to coat the inside of the cookie there. Okay, 
and we're just going to fill the cookie bottom there. Okay, what we're going to do is place these back in the oven that's still heated at 300 degrees for about 10 to 12 minutes. Okay, I've pulled these out of the oven and then I let them sit on the pan for about three to four minutes and I'm just taking them off and placing them on a wire cooling rack to finish cooling completely. Because of that cream cheese filling, you want to make sure these cookies are cooled completely. Okay, look at these red velvet cream cheese cookies. So delightful for Christmas. Oh, it'll decorate any table. Okay, let me know what your favorite cookie was down in the description box below. Mine are always going to be those jelly filled. My mom loves the red velvet cream cheese cookies and we can't forget those peanut butter cookies that my husband loves. And he loves those without the Hershey Kiss in them, but he can eat them with those. But all right, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you comment down below. And if you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and that bell notification so you'll always know when my shows are posted. Okay, I will see you on my next episode.